The first blast sent a plume of smoke into the air and set off multiple explosions. Then this. People were watching and filming from all over the city. The blasts were in the port area. Lebanon's health minister said a ship of fireworks had gone up, but other sources said it might have been a warehouse of ammunition. Shipping containers were blown open, and the smoke rose, casting a pall that could be seen for miles. No one knowing if this was a horrific accident, or worse, a terror attack. The force of the explosions overturned cars hundreds of meters away. Such huge blasts must have killed people, but it's not yet clear how many. My car was down there. It rolled over. I think this was because of the glass. The glass cut me. My car was like this. Ambulances hurtled through the ruined streets. The Lebanese Red Cross said it had sent out 30 teams. The injured were rescued by whatever means possible to go to Beirut's struggling hospitals, already burdened by COVID-19 patients. I don't know what happened. I was fishing. I heard there was a fire, so I turned around and started to head home. Then I heard something explode. I got injured. I don't know what happened. In the city centre, people picked their way through rubble-strewn streets. The walking wounded, many cut by glass that had been blown out of apartments and shop windows. Not since the civil war in the 1970s and 80s have the Lebanese people seen such devastation. These horrific scenes come as Lebanon is in economic freefall, its currency almost worthless, unemployment and crime on the rise. Because for years, corrupt politicians have run the country like a collection of fiefdoms, the banking system like a Ponzi scheme. As darkness fell, they tried to douse the flames. That might be easier than dousing the fury the Lebanese people will feel when they emerge from shock and ask whether this was an accident or an attack and how their leaders allowed it to happen. I'm joined from there now by Dr. Maha Yahya, director of the Carnegie Middle East Center. Can you tell us what happened from your point of view? Um, just an unbelievably large explosion. I've never heard anything like this before. I've lived through uh, wars in Lebanon. I was here in 2006 to, during the Israeli conflict. I've heard explosions, assassinations. I've never heard anything like this before. How it far away so are you from I'm, the port I'm quite far, at least, at least a 10 minute drive. 10 minute drive without traffic. I'm, I'm, I'm not close. But it was, it was, the explosion was so loud that I thought it was right next to me. Um, it was right next to my home. A friend of mine who lives on the other end of town thought it was right next to his. It, it's, it, I've never seen anything like this. The whole building shook. Um, and it, it came in waves. Uh, first there was the first wave and then the second wave. And then we heard the blast and things shattered everywhere. What did you think? I mean, obviously, you know, things have been very tense in Beirut in recent days. I honestly, initially, I, I had, I mean, the first thought was they've, they've targeted someone. There's an assassination against someone. Of course, the first thought, the news was initially reporting it was in downtown. So my head went to, I'm yeah, really luckily it wasn't that. Um, but now we're realizing, uh, and then I thought because it was so loud, I thought uh, maybe it was another leader who lives right next to my house. Okay, again, it wasn't that, but um, now we're just at a loss. I mean, the damage is so huge. Uh, it's It's been felt in, uh, in Babda, the presidential palace, which is at least a 20 minute drive from the port. Uh, it was heard in the mountains in Korea. I mean, it was heard almost everywhere. And the damage is so widespread, it's unbelievable. I've really never seen anything like this. We're not Just hearing very much yet about casualties. What are you hearing there? Uh, the casualty number is beginning to rise. The hospitals are overflowing. Some of the major hospitals are saying, please don't come anymore. One of my friends was injured. Um, the glass fell on her, so her arm is broken. She's been, uh, they actually had to take her out outside of Beirut to be able to get treatment. Um, the, the hospitals are at capacity. They're asking people to donate blood. 
uh, we just heard that the uh, Secretary General of uh, the Qatar Party has died as a result of his injuries. Um, so there, there are significant numbers of injuries and deaths, but we still don't know. Uh, there are reports that there are at least 3,000 injured, um, but uh, I mean, it's just too early to tell. But hospitals are at capacity, and people are being taken outside of their routes for treatment. What, what sort of effect do you think this will have on the political instability that is in Lebanon right now? Uh, it's just going to drive everyone over the edge. I mean, where this country is going through uh, literally the most significant and existential crisis it's faced in its contemporary history, it's facing a challenge on the political front. It's going through a massive economic crisis, a pandemic, and now this. The damage alone is huge, and uh, state institutions are already significantly weakened. I don't know how they're going to cope with this. Um, the, the Ministry of Health is saying, you know, treat everybody at our expense, but they're broke. So it's, it's just crazy. I don't know who's going to be able to even compensate damages. We're hearing about entire buildings just collapsing because of the force of the explosion. Um, I mean, people are, some, some people are saying it felt like an earthquake. They thought it was an earthquake because this, the, the, ro the, the, uh, the ground was shaking. Well, Dr. Yaya, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank, thank you. you.